Welcome back to the Good Morning Naija Show. This time we're talking about wealth and wealth creation. Ever wondered why many people work hard, seemingly do all the right things and still do not get wealthy? We've all often come out with the intention or the mindset of knowing that when you grow up, you want to have a successful career and you want to be wealthy. But today we're talking about this is why you are not wealthy. And if you feel that you're wealthy, man, maybe this conversation is not for you. But there's always something new to learn. No information is wasted. Today, our guest is a business consultant, a wealth educator, business mentor, and a medical practitioner with an amazing combination of expertise and creativity. She runs and facilitates executive consulting, mentorship, and leadership programs for private individuals and corporate organizations. She has over six years' experience mentoring over 1,000 business owners, CEOs of corporate organizations, and individuals with a drive for success, achieve their business, career, financial, and wealth goals by demystifying the ideologies and concepts that surround the process of creating generational wealth. Also, she is an executive director and CEO of Cahill Consulting Limited, and uh, she's a certified business mentor, mentor as well as a speaker and teacher of wealth psychology. Today, we are joined by Dr. Chisom Chioma Ibe. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so happy to be I'm here. I'm so this happy morning. to have you. So before we go into the conversation, medical doctor switched <laughs> into uh, psychology, uh, teaching about the wealth of psychology. How did that happen? Um, you know, there's something you said about growing up, thinking that you go to school, get a career, start a business, and that's it. You're set for life. Well, that was me because when you were saying that, I was smiling because. I guess for the longest time, I've always said to myself, I know I have to be a billionaire. I have to be wealthy. And then I figured, okay, being a doctor might be a, a fast way to get there. <laughs> and here I am, done with, with the whole medical thing and coming out and realizing that I got it all wrong from the beginning. So because of the experience that I had and my personal encounter, I began to see the mistakes that I made and also the mistakes that a lot of people who have the same desire and who, who have started businesses or have gotten careers, but for some reason, it looks like they're working backwards. Hmm. So it was, it was that understanding and, and the, the experience I had that made me decide, I think more people need to learn this and know that having career success is not the same thing as having financial success. They fantastic. And I, I'm really excited that you mentioned how you thought, you know, this is a fantastic thought pattern. You wanted to make money. And the quickest <laughs> way in your mind for you to make money was, you know, if, if I study medicine and I become a doctor, that is a quicker channel. But I want I mean, to assure yeah. you that you're not the only one who's thinking like that. There are many parents who right now are already, they are, uh, they are, positioning their children. They're already carving out their children's careers and their children. You, you'll be a doctor. You, you'll be a lawyer. <laughs> you, you'll be this. What is the role of parents in uh, influencing their children in terms of wealth creation? Because we see a lot of parents focus more on the career of their mm -hmm. children. You know, and, and the end goal for many is, oh, they want to be wealthy, they want to be successful, but their focus is so much on certain careers. And some parents yeah. end up having their children leave out the dreams that they wanted to leave out but couldn't achieve. You're very, very correct. In fact, I, I always tell people that if I knew what I know now, or probably, if, of course, I love my parents and I appreciate what they did for me. But I like to think that if they knew better, I probably would have gotten certain results in my life faster without having to go through certain processes that I went through. I don't really have to go to medical school to become a doctor or to, or to sorry, to become wealthy. Um, there, there, if, if, if more attention was paid to who I was as a person, we would have found a way to still get the same outcome without having to go through all the rigorous process that I went through. So parents are very, very uh, instrumental to helping their children get to that result faster. So what people have done is that they have misunderstood the phases of wealth creation which is what I intend to educate them as much as time for me on this conversation. Can I go ahead? All right. So let's go ahead straight into it. What are the phases okay. of wealth creation? Now, in the process of becoming wealthy, interestingly, the first phase which everybody ignores, because they think that the first thing is to start a business or to get a career. But the first phase in the process of wealth creation is actually wealth education. 
And that's because most people have not understood that wealth is a discipline. In fact, the same way I went to school and became a doctor and studied for six years, when you make the decision to become wealthy, whatever career you choose to go through, you must put yourself through a process of wealth education. But that's the part that most people miss out. They don't even bother about it. They just go straight to, oh, I have to make money, so let me start a business. But I'm saying it here right now that if you are not enrolled in a deliberate process of wealth education, I don't care what business you do, you're going to come back. So the first step in, those phases, in that phase of wealth creation is wealth education, where you deliberately enroll yourself in a process that educates you about what does it take to be wealthy? What are the steps in the process of building wealth? What exactly do I have to do? If I'm in a particular career, what am I supposed to be doing while I'm there to create wealth? That's the first step. Okay, and that's a, that's a very fantastic point you raised there. And I, I would say that I recently had a conversation with someone about this and said to the person that it's not enough to want to be wealthy. We must study for it. If, for exactly. example, you wanted to re relocate out of Nigeria, there are certain exams you have to study for and write to be able to so you prepare yourself for where you want to go to. And that's not something a lot of us do. So what would you say are some of the common mistakes that people make as regards wealth education? Also, in terms of incorporating wealth education into our syllabus for our kids. I once had a guest on the show who mentioned how he went on a fellowship in, in America and saw that they started to teach them about entrepreneurship, business, and very solid business marketing, you know, from when they were young. They started teaching them from like seven. So they had different grades. Uh, they, they teach this one about marketing. They teach this one about production. So they start to incorporate a lot of these lessons from, you know, from school. So I'm asking you this a, a twofold question. One, what are the common mistakes and how important is it to incorporate this into our, our curriculum? Okay, one of the common mistakes that people make is that in the process of, of wealth creation, most times when people hear wealth, the first thing that comes to their mind is money. But wealth is much more than that. So wealth creation, there are two parts to learning about wealth. There's the creation part and there's the building part. The creation part is where you, you understand who you are as a person and the value you bring to the world and how best to express that value. The second part, which is the building, is where you begin to learn about investing. What are the, what are the kinds of investments to be done? So most people focus a lot of, of their attention of, oh, I want to do investment, I want to do investment, without actually understanding the creation part, which is actually what helps them to further strengthen whatever knowledge they may get about investing. That mistake, I also made it, because when you talk about wealth to people, the first thing that comes to their mind is, oh, I want to make investment. But that's not where it starts from. That's, that's not where it starts from. Okay. So it's all encompassing. There are two parts. There's a creation part, and there's a building part. There's a psychology, and then there's a discipline. So if you can't do without the two parts, if you focus just on discipline, you still find out that something is different. All right, now let, before we come, I, you know, I have a question about psychology of wealth, but let's talk about incorporating wealth education into our curriculum okay. for- You know, I, I went to speak some time ago somewhere, and they were talking about all oh, possible reasons why um, our country, is having some back, uh, why we're still struggling with lack. And I told them, I said, listen, if by the time my children are ready to learn in a school setting, the curriculum that still exists is what is existing, I may have to design my own curriculum to train my own children. Because I don't see how we can still be operating on the same curriculum that is giving us the same results for hundreds of years or tens of years and, and we're still working with it. So it's not even a question of should it be incorporated, it's a question of why is it still not incorporated? So I know that the curriculum that will make this happen is not what we're currently using. It must be changed if something is going to turn out differently because it is by that education that you know exactly how to create. Because what education does to you is that it gives you the knowledge to be able to create. If you don't have the right education, you keep running in circles because you won't be able to create effect. So it's a question of, it's not a question of should it be incorporated, it's a question of why is it still not incorporated. So if it's not done, my, my intention is I'll probably design curriculum, raise my own children, and then 
to they see how well it works and we can democratize it. So yes, you do have a point that it, it, it's not a question of should this, it's a question of why not? It, it, okay. It's a must. All right, my next question borders on the psychology of wealth, and I'm asking this because my friend gifted me a book that was talking about the mindset of wealth creation. And one yeah. of the first things that the author talked about was how a lot of us have harmful thought patterns as regards wealth and negative thought patterns. For example, you would ask your parents for money for something, and then they'll tell you, do you think money grows on trees? So many people grew up with the mindset that money is very difficult to come by. And mm -hmm. as a result, this sort of affects actually being able to make money. What is the psychology of wealth and how important is it for us to dismantle certain thought patterns as regarding wealth creation? Thank you so much for raising that point. That was, those, that was in fact, I think the first two years when I, did, when I became deliberate about my own process, the first two years were spent dismantling a lot of poverty culture that I had unconsciously inhabited of course, by people who didn't know any better. Because this is how it works. The culture that you are raised in determines the decisions that you take, which eventually turns out to become the outcome that you have. So you see people fighting to get a different outcome. Meanwhile, they are still harboring the culture of lack that they were raised in. So the first thing you're supposed to do is to, first of all, begin to dismantle the culture of poverty that you were raised in and you can't blame your parents because they don't know any better. But there's something I always say that when you are born, you look like your parents, but the older you get, you look like your decision. So you're, you have a personal responsibility to now ask yourself. I grew up hearing that money is hard to make. I grew up hearing that money does not grow on trees. I grew up hearing that rich people are evil. I grew up hearing that, man, if you see anybody that has a lot of money, run away from them, there's something going on there. Those are the things that you heard. So you can't have this kind of mentality and then want to become wealthy when you think that money is bad. So the first thing I had to do was to dismantle all of this limiting belief. And that's why I said, when people go about the process of wealth creation, they go straight to asking about investment, not knowing that they are carrying a mindset of poverty and they want to invest. So Doesn't how do work. we practically dismantle these things? Because on the one hand, you are looking at your bank account. And in all honesty, the bank account is looking very lean. It's like it's on diet. And you're wondering how, you know, you're, you're trying to manage it. You're struggling. Or you're, 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 there's a, a divide between you saying what you're seeing and you learning to, you know, not accept that, yes, I'm broke or, yes, I'm, I'm in a poverty mindset. So how do we start to practically dismantle this mindset? And are you saying that we should deny the reality? Because the person doesn't have money. There's no money, true, true. And, this is, and it's, the person has, all the person has experienced is difficulty getting money. So how do you say that we practically dismantle this unhealthy thought pattern? Now, the, the, I, I love that question. And of course, that's why I enjoy the work that I do. Because when it comes to understanding how your mind works and the psychology of it, it it's a lot of work. But just to keep it simple and help anybody who's listening here to be able to take an action right now, is that the mentality you have came from the information that you've taken in over the years. So I'm not going to tell you that in the next 10 minutes or in the next three days that everything is going to disappear. But let me assure you that if you don't start, you can be rest assured that you're going to stay exactly where you are. So you might as well tell yourself, okay, I don't like where I am, so why don't I start doing something differently? Yes, there's no money in my bank account, but is that where you want to remain? Why don't you tell yourself the fact that I don't like what I'm seeing, so it's time for me to do something different so I can have a different outcome. So information is the primary thing that forms your mentality. And if up till now you haven't been deliberate about the kind of information you're taking, then it's time to, to begin to be deliberate about the information you're getting. So the first one, the first thing that I would ask anybody who is really, really serious about having things change differently is one very good source of information is books. And it, it shocks me when I talk to people who are in business and people who tell me they want to be wealthy. And in my conversation with them, I realized that the last time they picked up a book to study about their life or where they want to be was years ago. 
And I'm asking, okay, you want to be wealthy, mm -hmm. but you don't have a single book in your library that talks about that. How do you want to do it? Because psychology is psychology. It's straightforward. You don't have the information, you can't have the results. So books is one way to get that information into your mind, begin to shape what you believe. The second way is the people you listen to. The one you have now, you heard it from your parents and your teachers. If those parents and those teachers were not wealthy people, that means they gave you information from their state of being at that time. So it means it's time for you to get new parents and new teachers. And those come in the form of mentors and coaches who already have the results that you're looking for. You find your way into their lives, listen to them, observe them, watch what they do, and learn as they're doing it. Because if you do this consistently over a period of time, you'll be shocked because that, this is how it works. The human mind is so malleable, so malleable that only you can become a brand new person in the next one year if you change the information that comes to your mind. I can assure you, it happened to me. So I know that it doesn't take time for the changes to begin, but you have to, first of all, make that deliberate decision to say, the information I've gotten so far does not serve the kind of outcome I want. So it's time for me to deliberately choose the kind of information I want to allow into my life. And that begins with the studying and then the relationship. Fantastic. Or coach. So this is sort of a challenge to anyone who hasn't read a book in months. You need to go and read books because that's the way you renew your mind by the information that you consumed, whether you consume either written or through conversations or the kind of people that you surround yourselves with. Let's talk about maintaining the status quo when it comes to wealth. There have been people who have been exposed to wealth. And when I'm talking wealth, you know, the aspect of wealth I'm referring to now is financially. You know, they've, they've gotten exposed to a certain lifestyle, but after a while, due to poor choices or certain reasons, they're not able to maintain it again, and you find them going back to square one to start again. What are some of the common mistakes that people make that cause this to happen, and how can this be avoided? Okay. Now, in, in the phases of wealth creation, there's a part of wealth, um, because after wealth education, you have acquisition, you have accumulation. There's a, a very, that's why you have to know all the phases when you're starting. You don't just get in the middle of making money and then I realize that, oh, I have money, what do I do next? No. That's why wealth is a very deliberate thing. If you're not deliberate about it, you're not being wealthy, you're just making money and they're not the same. So because of how deliberate wealth is, there's a part of wealth, phase of wealth creation that is called wealth preservation. You have a responsibility to preserve whatever you get in, in terms of finances. You have to learn it. It's part of things you learn. You're supposed to learn the process of wealth preservation, where you, you know that this is not about me. So whatever money I make, there is a part of it that there's a, a, a demand on it to be preserved. And after it is preserved, the next phase after that is that it must be multiplied. And then after it is multiplied, it must be transferred. If you don't have all of these phases in your mind when you are building wealth, along the line, you wouldn't know what to do when money comes, and then you'll be making wrong choices. So one of the causes of those wrong choices is from people who are not deliberate about wealth with the intention to transfer it. So because that intention of transfer is not there, they make choices that make whatever money they make disappear. So because I know already right now that my goal is to transfer the wealth, when money comes into my hands, I'm not thinking about myself. I'm not thinking about how, how many cars I'm going to buy. I'm thinking about preservation. I'm thinking about multiplication. And I'm thinking about transfer. So any decision that does not align with these three things, I'm not going to make it. So people make those choices because they don't have all of this set up in their mind before they begin to make it. Wow, interesting. Okay, now let, let's talk about some of the, the, the ways you've talked about wealth creation. I'd like us to, we've focused a lot on wealth education. After wealth education, there were two other um, phases that you mentioned. Can you please lead us through these phases and explain what, what they entail? Okay. So after wealth education, the next thing then is, is wealth acquisition because 
as you get educated, interestingly, this thing is a flow into healing process. As you get educated, what you find out is that your mind will begin to understand how to create solutions. You will know exactly what value to bring to the marketplace. You will know how to project your value. And when you do that, the next thing that happens is that people will, give it, will begin to pay you money for your value. That way, you are acquiring. So that wealth acquisition. But that's not where it stops. Because after that, the next thing you're supposed to do is accumulation. But what most people do is when they acquire the wealth, the next thing on their mind is to spend it. So they're not even accumulating, they're acquiring and then they're spending. So after acquisition, you're supposed to then accumulate, which is where you make sure that a portion of whatever you acquire goes into preservation, not just into spending. So most times, why people fail in this process of wealth creation is that they're not patient enough to allow whatever it is they have acquired to go through the other spaces. Either they're trying to, um, you know, to, to look like they're doing well, so my friend just bought a car, I have to buy my own car. Um, I think I've increased the amount of money I earn. It's time for me to move to a new neighborhood. So all of these things make it impossible for them to go into the next phase of accumulation, which is getting enough money to put into a process of preservation. So when you acquire, you accumulate, then you preserve. Preservation is where you put whatever resources you have gotten from what you do. In a vehicle that preserves it, not necessarily making extra money for you, but making sure that economic factors like inflation do not affect the money. When you preserve, the next thing you want to think about is multiplication. Then when you multiply, that's when, whether you're there or not, money keeps coming. And of course, as you're doing all of that, you're making sure you have everything in place for the last phase which is transfer. All so right. You acquire, you accumulate, you preserve, you multiply, then you transfer. Okay, um, before we let you go, this has been a very, very uh, full conversation. I will need to have you again. This has been a very uh, beautiful, uh, eye-opening conversation. What would you say would be your pointers for those who want to start learning about wealth acquisition? What would you say would be some of your pointers in that regard? You know, books, what sort of books would you recommend? And how can okay. they go about it as they start their journey? Well, what, one of the first books that I would recommend, especially is teaching, I, I would say there are two books that I would recommend. Uh, one of them is the one that really had a major impact on my process. I would say it's Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich was written by Napoleon Hill over 20 years ago. That's to let you know that the moment you start, you start learning this, the principles transcend time. You can just save yourself the stress and learn it the right way once and for all. Now, there's a second book I would recommend, which was written by a Nigerian author, and that's uh, Mr. Steve Harris. It's called Honey, Why Are We Poor? That's the second book by Mr. Steve Harris. So I would recommend that anybody who wants to start, just in that order, think and grow it first, then you can now go into um, what is the book that Mr. Steve Harris wrote, Honey, Why Are We Poor? All so right. Are the I would recommend that anybody begins with. And of course, while you're doing that, please get mentorship. Get mentorship. Get somebody to guide you is extremely important. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I'm sure that you must put out materials on yeah. your social media that people can oh, get more information about. How can people follow you on social media? Um, I'm much more active on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is at Chisom Choma. My two names, Chisom Choma on Instagram, because I, I put out videos and I also do live sessions every week on Instagram. So All you can right. also find me on Facebook and LinkedIn with the same name, Dr. Chisom Choma Ibe. LinkedIn and on Facebook as well. So any of those three platforms, you get me there, but mostly on Instagram at Chisom Choma. That's where I put out um, more information. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Thank Chisom Choma Ibe. And wish you a wonderful week ahead. What a great way to start our Monday. We've been discussing about wealth creation, focusing particularly on this is why you're not wealthy. And we have